On this episode, we'll be reviewing the most exotic Zelos I've ever had my hands on. We'll also be featuring a viewer's collection. And finally, we'll be debuting the first ever AI co-host in a watch channel. Like that's a big thing. One of the constant things behind the scenes of this channel is the unspoken disdain for watches by my wife. Now, I like to think that I'm not the only one suffering from this kind of persecution. And if you share the same sentiments, then all you need is a Bolido watch. Now, this watch is designed in Germany and has been a recipient of numerous design awards. And also, as a proper Swiss watch, you can expect exceptional quality and you can even send this in for chronometer certification. If you have one of these in your collection, you can now boast to your wife about your impeccable taste and also impress her with your calculating abilities using this slide rule bezel. Now, how do I know that this is effective? Well, this is exactly what I did with my wife and she's now silent about my hobby choices, at least for the next few weeks. Oh, and it gets better. If you use my code in the description below, you'll be able to enjoy a very nifty discount, which we all know that wives enjoy a lot. Again, that's Bolido Watches. Speaking of constant things, Zelos has been a constant fixture of our videos. Now, it's also found in many watch collections around the world because of their unique approach to design and their brand accessibility. But there are certain models in the collections that make it a little bit more special and rare. So rare, in fact, that it may feel more at home at a safari being filmed by a Discovery crew and accompanied by a proper English narrator. This is one of those rare breeds. So let's find out what the Starfighter Damascus Aventurine Chronograph, quite a mouthful, brings to the table that makes really Zillos the king of microbrands. Let us examine it in its natural habitat on my wrist. This video is brought to you by Zillos Watches. If you just look at this watch, even if I just say yada yada, blah blah blah, and Google Gaga, you'd still know that I'm talking about a Zillos. Now, forget that you just heard a whiskered pirate baby make that introduction. Just believe me, this is one watch that you'll never forget once you have it on your hands. There's a kind of persona to it that challenges your perception about watches. If you're a watch enthusiast, you'll need little convincing, but for the rest of the world, they'll collectively ask, well, what's all the yada yada about? Well, for starters, this is a very comfortable 41mm watch that works even for baby pirate wrists. Partnered with this tropic rubber strap, it further conforms to the shape of your cuff. I like that Zillos went with an all-black strap and buckle setup here, as it will demand little attention. The material itself is quite flexible that adds to the appeal of keeping this watch on the strap. However, it also comes with a custom handmade leather strap that really brings this watch to a whole new level. This is a strap that I left this watch on. It feels more appropriate seeing how a lot of this watch is handcrafted. Being a new strap, it will require some breaking in to loosen that leather. It's also quite thick and hefty both visually and on your wrist. The overall look now comes off as a rugged do-it-all tool that needs to be smuggled by Indiana Jones from a forbidden Mexican temple. Now, if that's too exotic for you, you can bring it down a notch with Zillow's own 22mm Horween leather strap. This one is from the Titanium Swordfish and I'm pretty happy with this combination as well. The warm brown just blends well with the striking blue case. This particular strap went through a lot of adventures already, so it's quite comfortable and significantly thinner than the original strap. Why I only got a taste of the handcraft goodness on the bezel of this swordfish, all of that delightful detail engulfs this rare Starfighter model. See? It's a Zillos if you ever saw one. It's one thing to watch this timepiece from a screen, and it's a whole different proposition when held on hand to actually operate. In large part, it's made of titanium, but it feels heavy and solid like a stainless steel watch. Equally solid is the operation. This mechanical automatic movement is pleasing to wind with its non-screw-down crown. Setting the time and date is not a hassle at all, and the crown itself has little to no wobble while turning in either direction. All these playable parts are coated in black that I initially felt as out of place, but when I saw that everything else is darkened, it does make sense to be produced this way. 
Now this Elobore caliber is very satisfying to activate and very responsive as expected from an automatic chronograph movement. But with all of the distracting details on the dial, one may wonder if it's even readable. Well, it is harder to read than simpler chronographs, but whoever said that this was a simple chronograph? The strap alone has three different shades and tones, and the more you handle it, the more your details gets added on it. Suffice to say, this will be a uniquely personalized piece the more you spend time with this watch. And now that we're in the subject of details, let's examine this one more closely. Let's do this while trying to ignore that wild case for a moment. First, let's talk about that. That. Mm. Wow. Yes. Uh-huh. Look at that side. Yes. Really, okay, really, let's talk about it later. This stitching and wrinkled leather strap provides an extra organic look to the watch. The underside of the band is lined by blue textured leather that spills over the top through these hefty ring keepers. This is then tipped off with a signed coated buckle. Still at the bottom side, the display case back shows off the ETA2894 movement. This movement is decorated with a custom rotor that resembles an aircraft turbine. The caliber plates have a decent amount of perlage as well. The rotor is coated in black to match all of the other mechanical parts of the watch. I would have liked that case back frame to be coated in black as well to match these elements. Flipping over and it's time for that case. This is made from a combination of zirconium and titanium sheets. They are then folded numerous times to create this striped pattern. Every case is then torched manually by Zelos founder. True hand finish goodness there. To make things even more luxurious is the Aventurine dial. This deep blue sheet of ceramic beautifully sparkles like the starry night sky, a very appropriate material to represent a chronograph named Starfighter. And of course, in the dark it glows like a true zealous that it is. This case delivers a great shine and subtle texturing through its contrasting forged materials. Priced at almost $2,500, this price tag reflects its rare nature. There's only 25 of these in the world and another 25 with a meteorite dial. In 2016, Debatoon released the full blue titanium DB28T. That piece of art is worth 200 of these Zerktai Starfighters. Both the DB28 and this watch requires delicate hand finishings that's actually very easy to spot. All you need to do is stare at all of the blue parts. As easy as that may sound, it's actually pretty hard to get evenly done. Underdo it and you'll get a different color other than blue. Overdo it and well, you just have an expensive piece of burnt metal. That kind of craft that happens behind the scenes makes the owner of these pieces feel good about owning a piece of work and art. You can have that too with this Starfighter. If you can, you know, snag one pre-owned because it's all sold out. But all of that is yada yada to most people. However, they would certainly go ooh and ah once they see it in person. Now pay attention to this. You can get a Zelos for as little as $400 like this black tip GMT which is going to be released in a few days or one of these Starfighters which is six times the price. Now in between also there's a number, countless models to choose from so there's bound to be one for your taste and your budget. And on top of that, Zelos brings the best quality service and interactivity in the watch industry. So what more could you ask for? That really what makes Zelos the king of micro brands and we're just happy to finally review one of its top models, the Zelos Damascus Starfighter Aventurine Chronograph. Still a mouthful. Now, for this section, we typically have a blueprint discussion about some sort of thing that makes you, you know, interested about the watch industry. And we're not going to do that this time around. So now that I've spared you the pretentious virtue posturing of a section, I'm going to focus rather on you or more specifically, one of you viewers. You see, I'm like a captain in the high seas in the middle of the ocean that's dealing with this one overbearing 
overzealous crew member that's so hardworking that I can't really sail without, but at the same time, I can't throw overboard just to get him off the same deck that I'm on. So I'm just going to acknowledge that this ship won't stay afloat without his exceptional efforts and hard work. And we're talking about Ray. Ray has been a fixture of the channel lately with comments on nearly every single video I release. So he seems to have cracked the code on how to get into the show. He emailed me his background and I'm actually genuinely happy of having him supporting the channel. Here's what he says. I thoroughly enjoy what you bring to the table in this bizarre hobby of ours. As for myself, I am also an islander from Inishmore, Aran Islands, Galway Bay, Ireland. I am 54 years young and I am lucky enough to be retired after 22 years in the military. Since retiring, I headed back to Australia twice and hitchhiked back home. Then I attended college as a mature student to study marine biology, the toughest adventure I went through if I may add, and since then I've been at sea since 2011. I acquired my sea legs on board the ex-president of Ireland vessel, the RV Celtic Mist, which was donated to the Irish Whales and Dolphins group back in 2011. I was headhunted by the owner of the Spirit of Oyster Haven for the underprivileged teenagers. Spent six years on board her until COVID shut it down. I am a good mate of Ocean O'Malley and Russell from the Mad Watch channel. These are my two main men in this hobby, and you are possibly the next one that I would like to get to know better. Now aside from the last bit sounding like a messed up letter from a seafaring serial killer, Ray's story is actually refreshing to hear as this is a person who has spent time serving his country and then actually sailed the oceans unlike this pseudo pirate in Aruba who couldn't even swim more than 5 meters. True fact there. Ray also sent us his collection and here you could see he has a lot of affordable Casios with varying aesthetics. I can imagine a couple of them being very useful for navigation. But then he sent his Seiko collection and this is my favorite pieces that he owns. This three-piece Seiko bundle features a Seiko tuna, a monster, and a king turtle that apparently he got from Ojin. It's a good mix of colors and goes really well with his camo uniform. He also sent me this video of him wearing an Orient Ray, I see what you did there, but more disturbingly, he's filming a dead whale on the shore. That's just morbidly disgusting and I could practically smell the dead carcass from here. But that goes to show who's the real pirate between the two of us. So for being an authentic sea lover and having great taste in tough watches, you Ray will now be inducted in the Horological Pirate Hall of Fame. Congratulations. We salute you, mate. Now we're happy to announce that the greatest G-Shock pirate of all time, Captain Morgan has once again delivered some really juicy images and news about the next 40th anniversary collections from G-Shock. Now before you go out and look for excuses to your wife on your next great G-Shock purchase, let me take your attention first. Because one of these will be the one that I'm getting for this year. Because that purchase decision is much more important than yours. But anyway, not only that, there's also one model that we reported earlier and it was so close to the actual thing and I'm happy to report that and I'm really excited to see what your reactions to these next G-Shock collections for the 40th anniversary. First, we saw a new clear DW6900 that has this cool clear display gimmick. This will show off the circuit board underneath with a gold IP plated component that's also marked with a 4 star 40th anniversary graphic. Next, we saw the new arrangements that features a new module and tweak design. This will feature an MIP display that also seems to be rearranged and hopefully improved. This will be introduced with a new Mudman GW9500 that will come in a positive and negative display configuration. It also seems very similar to the GPRB1000 except that these models will have a light button on the bottom center. Next are the Revival models that features 5 of the most popular models from G-Shock. All of them will feature Casio's new biomass material. The gimmick for these anniversary models is that it has these gold 4-star ring keepers and the models list etched on the resin bands. Some of the models will be able to swap bands, which kinda doesn't appeal to me as I would likely keep these stock, and that these will have special display logos. 
Then off the heels of the very popular 30th anniversary Amazon Poison Dart Frogman, G-Shock is stepping up its production by introducing an MRG version of this revered product line. We actually got this scoop a few weeks ago and I even made a digital render of how it could look like based on the small image that was leaked. Now we have a clearer image of the MRG Frogman that seems to be a promotional poster. Beside each other, we got some of the features correctly like the case shape and details along with some of the dial elements. The rest is very different from the straps to the unique details of the subdials and rehab. G-Shock is touting this as an evolution of the iconic design while keeping the dignity of the MRG reputation. From the latest images, it seems to be using some high quality materials and even a sapphire case bag for this special model. Lastly, I'm delighted to see a gold G-Shock square that I'll be more than happy to own. This one looks similar to the GMWB5000 but spun off using some next level metallurgy. This will have a crystallized effect much like what we see with forged carbon fiber but made in stainless steel. This is part of a 3 square set that features the original black, gold, and red motif, the all gold tribute, and the negative silver model. There is a close-up shot of this unique stainless steel fusion that I think would look super cool in person. This gold version will be the one that I'll be getting this year. All of this news came from WatchySeek with some great contributors such as LNW that frequently post these information. Also, please give a follow to Morgan G-Shock on Instagram and support this great G-Shock collector. I have a feeling that this is not the end for the 40th celebration of G-Shock. I think they're still holding off some really amazing pieces but so far what I've seen is really exciting and I'm actually going to buy that gold G-Shock Square. But what about you? Which one of these models excited you and which ones disappointed you? L let's discuss in the comments uh, below and let's see if one of those comments could be in our next G-Shock report. Now it's time for your viewer comments. Now, I'm really proud about this channel and how it's championing innovation and looking for more ways to do less and stay lazy. So in an effort to do as little as possible, I'm now going to allow someone else to comment or answer your comments rather than myself because it requires a lot less effort and at the same time it kind of shows to you where all of your support and all that money is going through it's going to an ai that i develop and we're going to allow george that's what his name is going to be for now because you gave some suggestions but none of them are good enough so for now we'll call him george as in george daniels george morrison or george of the jungle whatever you may call it and we're going to allow George to answer your questions. And we're going to begin with Steve Moreno. Let's turn this around. There you go. There. Steve Moreno says, The Seiko 5 GMT seems like a great watch for the price. I'm working on acquiring my next watch, which is going to be a Grand Seiko Spring Drive GMT. I'm trying to decide between the SPGE 253 with the black dial and blue and bezel or the SPGE 255 which has the blue dial and the bezel okay so Steve Moreno has a very uh, life-changing dilemma here very very important really so we're going to allow George to answer this question for him the SPGE 253 features a blue dial and a stainless steel bracelet while the SPGE 255 has a black dial and a black leather strap. If you prefer a more classic, dressy look, the SPGE 255 might be the better option for you. On the other hand, if you prefer a sportier look or want a watch that can be dressed up or down, the SPGE 253 stainless steel bracelet well, this is may be lower more than suitable. I thought. Both watches are powered by Grand Seiko's high-precision quartz movement, which offers outstanding accuracy and reliability. 
They also feature the brand's signature high level of finishing and attention to detail, including a Zeratsu polished case and a multifaceted sapphire crystal. Ultimately, I would recommend trying both watches okay, now he's recommending something. if possible, Bersin. to see which one speaks to you the most. You can also consider your wardrobe and lifestyle to determine which one will fit in better with your overall look and daily routine. Okay, first of all, he talks in such a slow pace, it's like putting me to sleep. So if there's anything that this AI was able to do, it has uh, delivered another way to uh, make your nighttime um, storytelling a little bit easier. But you know, any to me, any of those two would be a great pick because quite honestly, I, I want to experience a Grand Seiko. But so far, that has eluded me. If you have any experience with those two, that, I think that's the best advice that we can give. So it's very important that you actually wear the watch first and see which ones um, you'd go with. But I think you've already done that and you've uh, shown in your past comments that you have the ability to, um, to experience these watches. So keep us posted which ones you actually choose. And maybe... Uh, we'll have George comment again on that. You see, I'm now prolonging this um, this show even more, but I'm supposed to allow just George to comment here. I'm doing more work. This is all because of you guys. Robert Littlehawk says, The lug setup looks wide. Does the height make it top heavy? So he's talking about here the... Richard Mill homages that we've been reviewing in the past few days. So let's see what George has to say about it. It depends on personal preference. Richard Mill watches are known for their high-end technical materials and construction, which can make them heavier than traditional watches. Some people appreciate the weight and feel of a Richard Mill watch, while others may find it too heavy to wear comfortably. Ultimately, whether a watch is too heavy or not is subjective and varies from person to person. <laughs> person to person. Maybe George is uh, sipping way too much of that martini right now. But also, this is this shows what AI cannot do. Uh, right now, this AI is actually just looking at all of the collective information that he could scour in the internet based on the... the question that we had about Richard Mill being top heavy but at least it knows what top heavy means now where it gets gets it wrong is that most of Richard Mills are actually pretty light especially when those models are made out of titanium and TPT uh, materials not to mention that the rubber straps are also quite light and soft so it most Richard Mills are not really top heavy at all so I don't know which uh, uh, George is uh, pertaining to here, but probably one of those uh, stainless steel models on smaller wrist. Actually, that's something that you need to consider when it comes to purchasing Richard Mills, and that's something that George doesn't know yet. Next, Ace Wing 221. Sorry to ask a dumb question, but what's the difference between a special edition Omega and a limited edition Omega? Aren't the two synonymous? There's a difference. And George probably knows about that. Special edition Omega watches and limited edition Omega watches both refer to limited run watches produced by Omega. A special edition watch is a one of a kind creation that is not part of a larger collection. It may feature unique design elements, materials, or functionality that sets it apart from other Omega watches. A limited edition watch on the other hand, is part of a collection that has a set production run. Limited edition watches are often released to commemorate a special event, such as a historical milestone, a sporting event, or a celebrity partnership. The production run of limited edition watches is usually capped, and each pretty watch comprehensive. is numbered, adding to their collectability. Both Special Edition and Limited Edition Omega watches are highly sought after by collectors and fans of the brand due to their exclusivity, unique design elements, and limited availability. Now my dog wants to get into the action too. 
Well, actually, George is pretty spot on with that, so we're not gonna comment. That's exactly what limited and special editions mean for Omega. Well done, George. Looks too much like an RM. Again, we're talking about RMs here, but this time we're talking about a uh, Hublot Mecha 10 that I reviewed ages ago. Uh, time Measure 9137 commented that. So let's see if George is able to distinguish between a Hublot Mecha 10 and a Richard Mille uh, watch. The Hublot Mecha 10 and Richard Hublot. Mille watches have similar features including a bold design and technical materials, which may cause some people to think that they look alike. However, each brand has its own distinct design language and aesthetic, and the watches She's themselves correct. are different in their details and execution. The Hublet Mecha 10 Hublet. has a more angular, angular case shape and bold, sculptural lines. The Richard sculptural Mill watches, lines. on the other hand, are known for their curved, organic shapes and technical materials, such as titanium and garin fiber. While some may see similarities between the Hublot Mecha 10 and Richard Mill, others may see distinct differences between the two brands. Well, well said. Actually, that is true. The Hublot Mecha 10. Hublot, not Hublot. Hublot Mecha 10, uh, when I uh, did the hands-on review with that, I actually... Um, saw that and noticed that that it has a lot more angular uh, bezel design rather than just a curved smooth uh, flowing uh, tonneau shape that the uh, Richard Mill has so there's a difference oh, but the, because of the tonneau shape that's what makes it kind of similar to many people's eyes but there's a big difference and actually uh, George actually got that spot on as well okay <laughs> here's a here's another one Niga Please One says, Quartz is gay. Let's see what George has to say about that. No, Quartz watches are not inherently gay. Sexual orientation and personal style preferences have no correlation with the type of watch someone wears, and it is not appropriate to make assumptions or judgments about someone based on their fashion choices. Additionally, it's important to avoid using derogatory or offensive language when referring to groups of people. Let's focus on treating everyone with respect and kindness regardless of their appearance or personal style. Well, George sounded very threatening there. But for that comment, you're banned from the show. Paprice 6248 says, Casio is literally the only G-Shock I don't like. I don't know why. Hmm. Okay. Sounds like we've heard of that before from Papris. Papris has made the same comment twice in the channel about the same subject of not liking the Cassie Oak. Yeah, the see. first comment prompted Jason to answer in a recent video. Likely, Papris did not watch past the first two minutes of the latest video where it explains why he okay, might feel this way reporting and there. posted his second comment thereafter for failing to watch the video completely and commenting twice on his uncertainties papris has been banned from the show okay 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 wait 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 okay first and foremost papris yes you are banned from the show because of commenting twice at least for 13 seconds or so but for trying to ban someone already on your first show, George, you're also banned from this show. That's enough for you. And that's time for Mr. Zilos. Horological pirates have to mod watches. It's what we do. Stock in watches, as in cars, is boring. Thank you, Mr. Zilos, and you're the one truly reliable co-host of this channel. And that is all for this time. See you next time. This time, see you next time. Whatever. One of the constant things... <coughs> now pay attention to this. You could... Great pirate, but this time the greatest pirate of G-Shocks of them all, Captain Morgan. 
why can't I just like end it like that? Find out which one it is, and let's enjoy the rest of the collections so far. <laughs> My slide, oh man, I forgot that.